You know how to fight? Matt, do you know how to fight? Don't blow. Do you know how to fight? That's what you gotta do. You catching this kid when you throw more than one shot. Look at here. You coming here, here, and here. Not here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here in Atlanta, Georgia, at center stage, and we're witnessing two very good boxers in their early career stages. I'm talking Matt Callahan, the young man that you see right there who has the gladiator tassel trunks on, taking on Julius Jackson in the white trunks trimmed in black. This is the fourth and final round of this fight. And right now, I've got it 2-1 or maybe even 3-0 for the young man out of Cincinnati, Ohio, Julius Jackson. What would you have told Julius Jackson coming into the fourth and final round, especially with the way that Callahan knows he has to basically bull rush him in order to win this fight? Oh, I would have definitely told, told Julius, continue, stick with your jab, keep your distance, you know, and, and, give, uh, and give Callahan angles. Don't stand right in front of him. Get your punches off and move side to side. Don't give him a, don't, don't give him a standstill target. And right now it looks to see it looks to me that, that he's definitely um he, he's doing that. So his coaches are, are definitely doing a, a tremendous job with him. He just can't stand still and, he, and hopefully not get tired. He's going to run into something. And that's exactly what Callahan did that time, winging those big right hands. And those big right hands had no effect. Oh, they looked aggressive, maybe to the crowd, but when you don't land, there's not a plan. No, not at all. And when you're throwing big punches and you're missing, that takes a lot of a, a lot out of you. And right now, Callahan is just going through the motions. He's not really, to me, he's not really looking to win the fight. He's just trying to survive and, and make it to, you know, hopefully another day. Callahan is looking a little tired, mouth wide open. He's hoping to land one big shot. He just caught, it looks like he just caught Jackson. He, he, all he has to do, Callahan just has to let his hands go. He looked like he may have won the third round. It was a very close round. If he can let his hands go and dominate this, this last and final round, he might be able to walk away with a draw and maintain his undefeated record. I think Julius Jackson needs to listen to Rico Hoy and throw that jab even more so because he needs to look out. And he just got hit with a right hand that knocked out his mouthpiece. And the referee, and they shouldn't have even put a delay in the, a delay in the fight. I mean, Julius Jackson goes back to the amateur rules because his mouthpiece fell out, but the referee didn't see it immediately, George Chip. But now the mouthpiece is going back into his mouth, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's quite interesting to see how it's happening. That was, that, that was very interesting. I had never seen that. The referee didn't, didn't stop the fight, and it was Jackson's fault that the mouthpiece came out. What a right hand that time by Julius Jackson. It was a whoop. A looping right hand and he knew that he put some hurt you know what this kid from Cincinnati can fight even though he was hurt he wants to hurt and I tell you what this is an exciting fourth and final round this one is going to go down to the judges and let's see the final seconds of Julius Jackson and Matt Callahan And there it is, the fourth and final round, and what a fight it was. Julius Jackson and Matt Callahan. I mean, when you look at both of these fighters, you can tell they both know they were in a fight. This was an interesting fight, watching both of these fighters do their thing. Julius Jackson and Matt Callahan, they both go over to their corners and, of course, congratulate the other for what they know was a job well done. If Matt Callahan is down 2-0, I know Christmas doesn't come until December 25th. He got an early gift. Oh, definitely. If he, if he walks away, being the hometown guy, if he walks away with a victory in this fight, they did that. The judges have definitely did an injustice. But I got to give it to Chris Mendorf, the matchmaker. He put on a, a, a great one, put a great fight together in these two uh, gentlemen right here. I'm curious to see Jackson uh, as he advances in his career because I think he's, he has a lot of promise as a professional. Julius Jackson making his professional debut. And he goes back to the amateur 
status where he goes ahead and he congratulates each and every vision of the corner including our camera and he looks like a winner look at him bouncing gloves off he looks like a winner if i have to score the fight i score 3-1 julius jackson even despite the big outburst which was one of desperation by matt callahan julius jackson is my winner but you know what the last time here in atlanta georgia we saw a hometown decision, and that will be our main event of the evening. And I'm talking Troy Wilson against Jose Roman. And Jose Roman, in my opinion, won that fight without a doubt. However, the judges saw it another way. It's going to be quite interesting to see how our judges see this fight. But now we're going to get ready to take it upstairs to, of course, the one man who can say it all. I'm talking to ring announcer extraordinaire, Jose. Tell me, what do you think about this fight? I got to say, uh, both, both fighters put on a great fight tonight. I'm looking forward to see uh, uh, Jackson in, in the future. I think he walked away with a victory in this. But like you say, the hometown judges, sometimes they, they you know, they'll, they'll do some injustice in, in certain fights, and they may give it to the hometown boy, or at least he can walk away with a draw. The, the final round, round was pretty close, but I still think that Jackson dominated the, the, the majority of that last round. So he should walk away 3-1 and bit with a victory in this one right here. I'll tell you what, I can reevaluate. It this way if all four judges saw this fight the same way for Julius Jackson maybe a shutout I can understand it because he was the far superior boxer making Matt Callahan miss time and time again as we take a look at it again I mean look how he made this guy miss toward the end of the ring and it was that South Park stance that really did it all he was able to hit him with the jab and then of course watch this in the fourth round look who got hurt it wasn't Julius Jackson, it was Matt Callahan. Let's go up to the middle of the ring and go to the man they know as Jose, who's got the final numbers. Jose? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go to the judges and scorecards. After four rounds, all three judges have scored at the same 40 to 36. Your winner, by unanimous decision, Julius Jackson! So there it is, Julius Jackson is your winner by unanimous decision. What a great opening fight for Absolute Boxing. I'm Ronnie Duncan along with the one and only Rico Suave Hoy. But he's got a bugaboo on his nose, on his eye, on his ear. We'll talk about that a little bit later. As a young man who walks out, a happy young man, I'm talking about Julius Jackson, a big winner in his professional debut. He's got to be a happy man going away. We'll be back with much more of Absolute Boxing after this. I see you, man. It's all good. man. F the blase, man. This how we play. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Absolute Boxing here. I'm Ronnie Duncan along with Rico Hoy giving you the blow by blow and the color. And Rico, we've got an interesting fight coming up next. I'm talking about two very talented young fighters. One is Navarro, as you see him here, getting ready five and three, taking on Broderick Harper out of Columbus, Ohio. Broderick Harper has an interesting record at 6, 11, and 2. Now, look, if you see him outside of the ring, he looks like Mickey Mouse with dreadlocks. But he says, I'm more like Mighty Mouse. Let's go up to our ring announcer, the very one and only Osei, as he brings our fighters into the ring. All right, fight fans. Our second bout of the evening. And our second bout of the evening, the referee for this fight is Jim Cor, our referee. Our judges, Erwin Deutsch, Echo Cannon, and Annie Rowe Morgan, counting for the knockdown of Brian Stutz, and our timekeeper is James Ford. Of course, coming into the ring right now is Broderick Harper, and I told you, he looks a little bit like Mighty Mouse with uh, the ears. <laughs> Quite interesting, but an interesting record. 6, 11, and 2, had a fine amateur record. And uh, you remember him as an amateur? I, I remember Broderick uh, from the, he used to be uh, with the, in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, right? Yeah. Cincinnati, but now out of Columbus. Yeah, okay, yeah, I remember him. He used to travel uh, with Ricardo Williams and, and those guys during, you know, back in the amateur days. He's not very, um, he's not very old. I think he's only, can't be no more than maybe 24, 25 years old. But as an amateur, I, I remember him. He was pretty fight, pretty good fighter. Well, he's fighting a young man with Fuji Rosario. That's right, Nazaro. Are you ready for some more All right, Black there's, of course, Jose. He's going to introduce our fighters. All right, fighting out of the blue corner, hailing from Columbus, Ohio, with a record of 6, 11, and 2, oh, weighing in at 119 pounds. Make some noise for Broderick Harper. 